what you see is the little KK6 and this is kind of a little different process than what we usually do but I thought I'd show you how it can be done right here we have some silver ore that comes from Idaho a property up there that we have and this silver ore right here is extremely high grade but it is a silver sulfide ore and there's a little pyrite in it, a little arsenopyrite and a little zinc and a little manganese so anyhow that ore right there runs now oh, I don't know 800 900 ounces of silver to the ton and then over here we have a K&N crusher that I get from make your own gold bars this is their largest crusher it's a 14 inch in diameter and at any rate you run these crushers dry and they're pretty dusty but I kind of overcame that rock goes in there and comes out of the bottom and I built a little table here for it and then what I do is I come over into a little bucket and this bucket right here I put a vacuum cleaner bag on it so in other words you put your rocks in there and the air and everything in your ore comes down into your bucket which has got a rubber seal on it and the vacuum cleaning bag lets the air get out but keeps the dust in there and it takes rock they say you can put three inch rock in it I never put anything in it over an inch but at any rate it takes it from big rocks to literally powder in one pass. It's just, it's like face powder. So that takes care of the crushing part of it. And then once I've got it crushed, then I want to concentrate it. I want to get rid of all the quartz and as much as the other materials that I can and so we go over here to one of our dealers in Canada builds this little miller table here it's, uh, it's a little black scorpion fine gold table and in fact right now there's some gold sitting on it that I cleaned up out of some black sand but at any rate I take the crush door and I put it on this little miller table here and run the water real real slow and run all the quartz off of it and all the other gang materials off it. and then I once I have my concentrated ore then I roast it and by roasting it I'm putting it in a in a metal pan and putting heat to it and I'm driving the sulfur off so in other words we have a silver sulfide ore and the other materials that are in there there's a little bit of gold in the arsenopyrite but I roast it and I drive the sulfur off and when you drive the sulfur off the sulfur atom gets replaced with an oxygen molecule and what we can do once it's in an oxidized state is with our graphite clay graphite crucibles here the graphite tries to burn and the only way that the graphite can burn is if there's an oxygen source when it's in the kiln so what it does is it literally steals the oxygen molecule away from the silver oxide and since it's above the melting temperature of silver it becomes metallic silver and it uh, pours out into a little ingot right here is some of the ore that I've roasted 
that's all ready to go into the into the into the crucible with some flux and then we'll heat that up and we'll melt it and we'll pour us a, into the conical shape mold because I'm working with an ore concentrate the conical shape mold allows everything to go down into a little cone shape and it captures everything out of the flux so um, eventually I'll do a video using the crusher and I'll also do a video using the little black magic black scorpion excuse me little black scorpion Miller table for concentrating the ore and then I'll show you how to roast it and then obviously I'll show you how we burn it and pour it into a little ingot. So having said that this is a little bit more complex than just melting than just melting uh, a placer gold but it's still a lot of fun and it's pretty cool in itself to be able to take silver ore, silver rock here just doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot well it really does doesn't show up very good on this camera I don't know if you can see this or not this is some really high grade silver sulfide ore but eventually we'll teach you how to, to go through the process crushing your ore concentrating it on a little miller table or whatever roasting it and then fluxing it with a little KK6 adding the flux to the roasted material and pouring uh, an ingot out of it so um, right now I'll uh, sign off here and once I get set up and get the furnace going, et cetera, et cetera, I'll get back to you and you can watch the process of smelting it down. I'll get back to you. Hang on. Hi, guys. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to way out. I can find my spoon. this is just a roll and once it 
it's all nice and homogenous and all mixed up real good. We'll charge this into our crucible. Doesn't take too long. We'll take a look at it and see. Yeah, it looks all right. As you can see, I got the furnace lit, and obviously my workstation is going to get pretty hot here pretty fast, so I got to get rid of everything I'm not going to use. I'm gonna use that crucible, I'm gonna use this bomb. And I'll get this right here for charging the crucible. I got the kiln lit. Kiln's starting to warm up. Kind of hoping it'll get darker here in a little bit and things will look a little bit more impressive. So, we got 60 grams of ore and 60 grams of flux. <coughs> Typically, you should use, oh, a two or a three to one concentration, uh, basically one part ore to two or three parts of flux. But I've worked with this material before and I figured out exactly how uh, how skimpy I can go on the flux. Our conical shaped mold here, of course, once we get the crucible in, we'll place our mold up on top and we'll get it hot too. So I guess I could go ahead and charge the crucible. Fill your crucible much over half full, maybe two thirds full, and this is probably going to just fit in there. You can add material to your crucible once everything is melted. If you do it very, very slowly. And you want to make sure that your material is absolutely dry. So we got our flux and our concentrate in there. Give you a little bird's eye view here. Probably can't see a whole hell of a lot, but it's about oh, it's about that full right now. A little over halfway. Still gives it some room to expand. So well, the next thing to do is to get it in the kiln. I put some gloves on here. Get my tongs over here. I'm going to separate the body and the lid all at once. And then I'm going to put the body on and then put the lid on last. Put your crucible in, center it as best as you can. Then when you put the middle section in there, you center the middle section, then your lid goes on. It makes it pretty simple. So here comes the body of the counter. Now I'm going to set the lid right there. I'm going to grab my crucible here. Center it in the kill. That'll work. Pick the body of our kiln up. Center it around your crucible. Put the lid on. And away we go. Now, one thing you can probably notice is that. There was some flame coming out of there, but once I put the crucible in there, all the flame seems to have disappeared. And what's going on is it's absorbing all of the heat in the combustion. So once everything gets hot in there, then that yellow flame will start coming out of the top again. So, at any rate, we've got it in there. We're warming up. I'll, uh, 
I won't bore you while this goes on. It's probably going to take 15 or 20 minutes for this thing to get hot and fluid. So I'll sign off, and then when we get ready to pour, oh, one thing I was going to do was I was going to put my mold up on top here. And I'll just set it off to the side there so that the flame's just contacting it a little bit. And I'll start warming my mold up. I always like to pour into a hot mold. Okay guys, I'll get back to you as soon as this is ready to pour. Hi guys, I'm back. Everything's hot, everything's melted. So let's see if we can go ahead and pour this little puppy. First thing I'll do is I'll take my mold, and that mold is hot. Over and we'll set it down right there. I'm going to separate my kiln and my body. Grab the crucible and we're going to pour it into that mold. Quite a bit of flux in there. I think it'll hold it all. If it doesn't, it'll just run over and get caught in the pan there. So here we go. We'll separate the body and the kiln. We'll reach over here and grab our crucible. Come over to our mold. back in the kiln. I'm going to restack the kiln up. I always like to put a crucible over the top of this mold because when that cools off it cracks and it pops and it'll spit pieces of flux out. So, also, the reason I put the crucible back in there is I'm going to shut this thing down and pull the torches away. And I like to do that because then the kiln cools down slowly. So, we made her pour. Mold's cooling off. Got it covered with crucible so it doesn't pop. We'll go ahead and let it cool off. And then once it gets cooled off, I'll dump it out of there and we'll hammer on it and we'll see how we come out. Hang on, I'll get back to you. Okay guys, I'm back. It's been, oh, I guess 15 minutes or so. Things ought to be cool enough to see how we did. And we'll pull the crucible off there and see what I mean about that glass cracking and spitting off of there. That's what happens, especially with conical shaped mold. Oh, we'll take that out of there and we'll dump this out. Well, that wasn't very hard. Wow. That's pretty good size. Let me find something to pound on that a little bit with. Tap this off a little. Turned out pretty nice. Not too bad. Let's stick it on a scale. See how we did. Put 60 grams of ore in there. 60 grams of concentrate. And 60 grams of flux. And so now we'll throw that on there. 29.5 grams. So it looks like we did pretty good. Looks like our concentrate's running about 50% silver. 
That's pretty good. Anyhow, KK6, K&N Crusher, little gravity concentrator, can be done. I'll work on, I'll work on some more videos and get you some more specifics on roasting, etc., etc. Anyhow, pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.